So if one of you wants to do it, let's do it. But my camera is a bit weird. Okay. Anyway, so let's start. So of course, uh, on the thumbnail, you can see the, the OG, the, the guy that uh, reached level 99 in commodity trading, which is Mark Rich. So hopefully, uh, some of you may may reach this uh, ultimate level <laughs> and become a, I mean, become a multimillionaire refugee. <laughs> uh, I think it, it was hunted by the FBI or something like this. Yeah. So this is the uh, OG level, the ultimate level, level 99. So um, I'm going to take all of your questions at the end, unless I see something uh, here. Like, was Glencore and Cargill due to the times? Oh. Yeah, actually, it can be done today, but it's not going to be in the same form. I mean, but Glencore, I don't know, it's 50 years old. Now it started with Mark Rich, so it's like, what, 50 years old? Cargill is 200 years old. Uh, so you need to revise your expectation, but of course it can be done, but it should be another form. Um, yeah, Interpol was looking for him. But he was in Switzerland, you know, chilling. Back in the day, Switzerland was a heaven for money and people. Now, <laughs> it's, it has changed. Um, credited with the creation of the spot oil market, yes. Um, so for the guy, for the people that doesn't know, a Mark Rich, um, they said he created the spot oil market. So before, let's say Mark Rich, the oil market was long-term agreement between state and big buyers, basically. Yeah. They said, okay, I'm going to sell you for five years crude oil at that price. So then, you know, the, uh, the, the oil producer can go in a foreign country, set everything up, and they know that for five years, 10 years, 20 years, they are going to get um, uh, crude oil for one uh, for the same price. So then actually, this is how start every market. Usually, now you can see, for instance, in the hydrogen mar market, it's a contract like this. Okay, for the next 10 years, for the next 20 years, for the next 30 years, we are going to buy hydrogen, hydrogen from the, that producer at that price. So, and this is how every uh, commodity market starts. Basically, you have a bunch of players that have fixed, um, fixed price. And as the market becomes more liquid, that there's more players and so on, then um, the aspect market uh, just uh, appears. That's not the <laughs> that's not the point of uh, today's um, uh, crosses live, but uh, I think it was still a, a good question to answer. So we are going to see two things uh, today, tonight, wherever you are. The first one is the level up flywheel. So what you need to do to um, uh, constantly level up as a commodity trader or actually anything in life. But that's the thing. Then we are going to see the commodity scale street. So first of all, the level up flywheel. So the level up flywheel can, we, can be described like this. And I'm going to explain each uh, icon of what it means and what it means if you want to do it. So the first icon here at the bottom is knowledge. Knowledge, um, obviously, I don't know, guys, for the younger, I don't know if you know that guy, Ty Lopez, but Ty Lopez was one of the most famous uh, guy before Top G before Andrew Tate, uh, because he had this ad seen like 100 millions of times, something like this. And in this ad on YouTube, he was the first one really to push ads on YouTube. And he had a very, uh, the first, uh, I think the first set was like, you know what I like more than cars like this? It's knowledge. <laughs> this is why. Uh, and then he shows his books and he said that knowledge is the most important thing. And it's true that the, a lot of these are said that uh, that say that knowledge is power, but actually knowledge is potential power because you need to turn your knowledge into something, otherwise it's useless. You know, we all know a lot of guys that are extremely book smart. The guy knows everything, but has not done shit in his life. Yeah, yeah, I'm pretty sure he has a lot of knowledge, but if you don't do nothing about that, uh, what can we say? So the first thing that you need to have is knowledge. Then you need to convert this knowledge into this. So you need to convert this new knowledge into skill set. So for instance, here, let's take the uh, um, example of a video game. You have like a different uh, type of skill set, assault rifle, sniper rifle, first aid, fitness, blah, 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 charms, okay? 
And you need to convert what you know, your knowledge, like for instance, your knowledge about assault, assault rifle. If you've never shot with an assault rifle, you can know everything about this weapon. But if you've never practiced it, then you don't have a skill set. You just have a knowledge. So the first thing, and this is the most important, like reading books, reading, uh, watching video, YouTube videos, and so on. All of that, it's very important for your broad knowledge. But then you need to do shit, you know. Otherwise, it's just knowledge and it's not really that valuable. You need to convert your knowledge into skill set. So there is a bunch of uh, skills. A skill set is a bunch of uh, things. I think one way that a lot of people describe it is like there is like art skills, shit that you, we know that you know or you don't, like mathematics, you know, uh, and, and that analyze or stuff like that. And then there is soft skills which are maybe the most important if you are in commodity trading and especially in physical commodity trading, it's your soft skills. So communication, leadership, time management, stuff like that, negotiation. Um, it's, uh, yeah, this is your, uh, this is the, all of that are soft skills because they are quite hard to assess, you know, in a test at school, but they are the most important in uh, physical uh, commodity trading. Uh, one thing, is, that in skill set that I also put is your character trait. Because it's, I'm pretty sure you know that you, you can change who you are. And if you can change who you are, you can better uh, uh, become better at what is your job. So for instance, there's a bunch of character traits that some people said that you leave, I mean, that you get them or not, or all of that is bullshit, you know? You can grow a character trait. And a character trait is even a better version that has soft skills because, for instance, to be good in communication, you need to have like empathy, a lot of empathy, even though it could be weird, but it's completely true. Uh, if you want to be good in leadership, you need to be good. Uh, you need to be a disciplined person because a leader is often extremely disciplined. Otherwise, people don't respect them. And in that case, it's going to be hard to have leadership. Um, again, time management, if you have no discipline, it's going to be extremely difficult to be uh, to have time management. Um, negotiation, if you have like, uh, again, no, uh, I, I would say <laughs> humility in a negotiation, this is also a bad thing. So um, that's, if you actively train those soft skills, then those soft skills can even like be, help you with your character traits. And for instance, you notice that you do a, a lot of negotiation and, and you don't really have like any uh, humility in the negotiation, your ego speaks a lot and you'll see that you have extremely poor result. But if you need to have the ability to see about yourself, what is what was wrong, what was what uh, what what went wrong, and so on, but th those are uh, extremely important thing. So once you have the knowledge, then you translate that into skill set. There is another thing that a lot of people don't think about that. It's about experience. So all those skill set that we have seen before. There is like a, gradu a graduation on how good you are, you know, how good of a leader you are on the scale to one to 10, how good of a manager you are on the scale of one to 10, you know, because some people think they are good, but they are only like a tree. How good you are in conflict resolution. That's extremely important, um, uh, especially in uh, international trade. Because there's going to be a lot of conflict. Man. <laughs> so, um, if you are like an, an ace in a, a conflict re resolution, you are probably also extremely good at negotiation and persuasion. And that's mean that you have a high integrity and a high discipline also, because all those characters that goes together. But it's also true for like um, uh, accounting. I mean, this is a hard skill. How good of an accountant you are, man. If you are, you are level 10, that you can do sh shit with your numbers and uh, <laughs> that other people don't, or you just have basic knowledge. So experience is going to push some of your skill set Toward like a, a, um, a higher level. And this is also important to, to understand because you have the knowledge first of anything like accounting. Okay, I know how it works. Then I try to do it for my uh, one job or for whatever, for whatever for my company. So then I acquire a real skill set. Then if I carry on doing it because I like it and I don't trust anyone else to do it, then I will acquire experience about accounting. Okay. So all of that um, is to uh yeah all of that then it this is quite important to go to one of the mother uh how can i say this is not one of the most important thing if you want to level up is the last point is network once you have enough skill set and enough experience then you'll be better networking 
because the reality with networking is that it must be a mutually beneficial relationship. So if you have nothing, and you know nothing, you are a kid uh, in the, uh, on the block, it's going to be very difficult to, to, to network uh, effectively because no one wants to speak with you. I mean, you, you what, what, what have you done? What, what can you bring to other people? How it could be mutually beneficial for me to speak with you? And this is what people completely miss in uh, when they, they network and where they try to form a relationship with someone. It's like it should be money, money, uh, beneficial. And now that I'm in this space with my YouTube channel, almost 4,000 people, who would have thought that 4,000 people would be interested in physical community trading? But and what I do on, uh, um, on uh, social media and so on, a lot of people pings me, you know, because they have deal, because they have whatever shit. And I can see that, you know, they are like not quite experienced because their message is, is lacking of just understanding of what I could bring out of uh, this. So usually the message like this, oh, Damien, I have an opportunity for us to work together. Uh, basically, what you need to do, Damien, is to finance and find a buyer. Okay, Jude, it sounds like a great opportunity for you, but not really for me. You know, those people completely lack empathy. They lack understanding of the world is not about themselves. <laughs> so those guys, they, they, they need to learn a lot to, to be better. So this is why you need to be some, to have some, some kind of skill set or to have some type of experience if you want to network effectively. Before that, it's going to be very difficult. One way to network, I'm not going to do it about networking. I think I've already done uh, videos about that, but uh, it's to provide value first. So here is a, four examples of people that provided value first. So uh, we have here German. So German basically said, look, look Damien, um, uh, I've seen in your course that uh, this is missing. I can uh, make a bonus course about late time calculation. I think it would be great for your, uh, for, for your courses, something more practical and so on. And said, okay, man, shoot. And he did the, the course about late time calculation. Um, extremely, extremely uh, interesting courses, uh, even, and uh, we form a relationship together. Then we have also Caribbean, he's the same. I said that I wanted to have uh, help with my blog. So he wrote a bunch of shit for my blog. Um, Leon the same, helped me with my blog. I'm uh, helping me with the website and so on. So basically they provided value first and then we form relationship. So even though they did not really have all of them, like some type of, uh, um, experience or skill set directly involved in commodity trading or whatever, they had something different that I was looking for or that I could even, uh, that could be use, uh, useful for me. And they acted on it. So this is how you network effectively. And I'm still in contact with all of them. Um, so then once you have unlocked the network part of uh, the flywheel, the, ne the network is going to something that's like putting um, uh, oil, putting uh, gas on something, it's going to make your, your, you level up way faster because with the right network, you will have the right people to speak with and they will help you extensively with return on experience. They can say, oh, look, we already done that. We had this issue. I'm like, okay, good. This is this was million, but you just only worth a million. And uh, also they are going to teach you a lot of things that, um, uh, that, that no, no one else could. So this is really the network that will help you uh, tremendously by loving the app. So, but first to be in a, in the right place in the right time and speak with the right people, you need to do this, uh, room to work. So this is the level up flywheel one day to become <laughs> the, the, uh, level 99. So let's see the, uh, second part of, uh, what I wanted to show you, this is the skill tree. And uh, after that, we are going to uh, in Q and A. So skill tree. So if, if you've been playing uh, video games, you know that there is a bunch of uh, games where you get experience, then you can get new, um, uh, new, uh, new skills. So you can do new stuff. So here, this is a, basically a little bit the same idea. So um, there's a lot, a lot of different skills to be extremely good uh, at commodity trading. And you are not going to get them like um, right away. It takes time. So one skill is how to find counterparties. Another skill is how to approach them. Another skill would be how to know the trade flow. Okay, so for this commodity, I know the trade flow. I know that people buy from Chile and they sell uh, to uh, Korea. I know that a bunch of the trade flow is also out of, uh, I don't know, Europe to uh, China. Then there's another small trade flow for that type of quality that go the gas. And, you know, by knowing the trade flow of uh, the commodity, then you can get a better understanding 
to um, uh, to the we can get a better understanding that to help you close more. So knowing the trade flow is very important. Then the specification about your product. I've seen so many people. I don't think they really understand um, all the minutia and the uh, importance of specification. Like for instance, um, something which is quite new to uh, for me. Um, um, I'm speaking with a bunch of guys about the protein um, feed for animals, and uh, there is like a lot of minutia. You know, you cannot give everything to all the animals, um, and there is a, a the way the protein is produced. It changes a lot who can use what because of the machinery, because of the, it's very, very um, important to know well the specification, not only what is on the sheet, but also what it's mean for the people that use it and for the people that uh, produce it. Then closing, if you are understand the trade flow, you're good at approaching people and you understand the different type of specification, we, who is doing what for what reason, then you'll be better at closing deals. Uh, then there's another skill. Uh, relation, maybe I'm not. I'm definitely not the best at this one. It's relationship management, right? RM. I, I took RM from um, private banking. Uh, private bankers are now called RM, or M, which is relationship manager because their their role is just to make sure that the client is happy and doesn't leave. So basically, once you have closed a deal and that you have a bunch of counterparty, your only job is to make sure that everyone is happy. So then you can do this deal again and again and again. So this is why a lot of trading company, small one, they have a handful of buyers, maybe two, three suppliers, and that's it. And they have a multi-million dollar business because they don't need more. Not the skills, the operations, uh, operations on water, on rail, on rail, on trucks and whatever. You need to know your operations if you want to trade effectively, otherwise you make big mistake. Risk management, risk management. Uh, there's so many uh, types of risk management in commodity trading. I'm not, not going to even go there. Uh, accounting, this is something if you have your own business, you need to understand the, uh, your accounting and your counterparty accounting. It will make uh, easier to understand why uh, some income terms are used and so on. Commodity trade finance, then when your get, business gets bigger, so you can tap into commodity trade finance. You need to understand how it works. Management, business get bigger, you need to manage people. And then when you are like level, 99 like Mike Mark Rich and all the big uh, firm you need to toss on geopolitics and so on to make a move where you are going to place your asset and so on so basically um it's like these limitless skills that you can to, to need to learn if you want to uh, become the godfather <laughs> of commodity trading but obviously you don't need all of them to to make uh, your first deal for instance if you are a paper trader so someone that trade uh, on your screen and don't, don't really touch the, the the physical, then what you need to understand is the trade flows. Then you can understand, okay, this news will impact the future market or not. If it, uh, if it hit a country which is important, what does it send? You need to understand microeconomics. You obviously need to understand risk management, um, uh, position sizing, and so on. If you what you do is trading on your futures and obviously supply and demand. You need to understand how to make a model, uh, supply and demand model, how to update your model, and so on. So these skills as a paper trader are completely different, uh, not really completely different, but a different bunch of skills that if you are like a business developer, someone on the ground that meet people and that make sure that uh, that um, you can tie up a new operation. So that's uh, basically all I had to say for this uh, little um, uh, live show. I just wanted to show you this because um, what it's very important is a lot of people are stuck here, you know, in the knowledge phase. But knowledge is is important. I mean, still now, now that my children are a little bit bigger, I have more time to read again, and I'm very happy because I learn new thing, and I, it's also I reread good book. So then I go, okay, did I do it like this? Maybe I can apply it to my business and so on. So this is extremely important, and this is the fund fund uh, fundament of everything. But then you need to use it to turn it into skill set, and then. Uh, use it for um, and then um, and then use those skills again to get experience. And once you have this and you have so you have someone of you are someone of experience, then your network is going to come to you and you can bring something to your network. So then it will expand. So that's pretty much the idea. So guys, um, any question about pretty much uh, anything? Uh, So 
So I have one thing that something that I'm going to um, uh, to add maybe in the live show is I'm going to show you the book that I, I read now that I'm forcing myself to read again. That could be quite interesting. Um, how important and is this, is it that MP yes yes exactly so this is something but I I don't know how it will go with ESG because we are seeing the end of this work ESG era and now that um, the inflation is there people are getting poor do we really want to uh, to put I'm not sure how far this ESG is going, um, if it has leg or not but yeah it used to be very important especially for the banks for the lenders that wanted to have like ESG um, friendly. Uh, and they wanted the money to go to a ESG friendly place. So it's an extreme pain in the ass for the traders, but usually the traders don't do that. They have a team that do it. And again, it hurts mostly the small and medium commodity firm. You know, if you need to add like two sustainability officers for your supply chain uh, and you are a small team of six, seven, uh, maybe 10 people, it's, 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 a, it's a cost. Um, and uh, yeah, it's a massive pain in the ass. But again, I'm not like saying like, oh, ESG is a. It's a is a bad thing. I think right now ESG is just um, finding new papers and finding way to to make your shit uh, shine more. So it, they, I think, like um, yeah, on the ESG scales of I don't remember which one, like uh, tobacco company are above uh, Tesla in terms of ESG factor. So this is complete bullshit. Yeah, man. So uh, is it, I, I got your email. Um, no, no, of course, no, I don't. I never use those uh, those um, those platform. Uh, and I can tell you what, because it's mostly a waste of time. Or best case scenario, it's a, a waste of time. Worst case scenario, it's used by scammers to scam uh, global people. So. Uh, I, I don't think I've ever heard someone that made a deal uh, in commodity trading or with that, those platforms. Maybe if you have finished product with Alibaba and then you go to China, but again, it's, it's very, very tough. What are the best job uh, to aim for first uh, starting as a trader for someone with experience? Okay, so again, uh, if you want to get into a commodity trading firm, it's going to be extremely difficult to get uh, to have a, have a seat as a trader, especially as a big one. So first, you need to aim at a job like uh, analyst, um, risk management, operation, and then move up um, in trading role. Uh, this is what I would do. Uh, yeah, so this is what, no, this is not what I would do. <laughs> this is what, uh, uh, usually how people do it. Then there's another way to do it. It's like, if you are just, uh, good, or I don't know if, say, if you're like a bit more, um, entrepreneurial and uh, you don't want to uh, do the operation stuff and things like this, uh, what you do is uh, you find real deals and then you bring those deals to the trading company and say, look, man, I have those deals, um, uh, you finance it, or maybe you give me a job and so on. And this is how it works. Things um, w when I was like employee uh, and I wanted to switch job, uh, basically what I did is like I, g I gave a deal to to the other companies to look that I mean I know they wanted to hire me. We were in conversations. Look, this is this deal is for you. Do it and do whatever you want with it. I think now it's uh, like more than ten years ago, so I, I'm of, of, obviously it's. Uh, forbidden by my contract. I cannot give this to a competitor, but <laughs> these are what I did. Uh, do I need to pursue an opening a commodity trading business? No, you don't need a, a degree to open a business. Definitely not. I'm not sure that uh, uh, Mark Rich had a, had a degree. Uh, well, seriously, you don't need. This is, and mostly now it's a fucking waste of time. Um, Andrew, I'm currently visiting some issue with a company risk, <laughs> only willing to do B2B and everything, not able to act of flexible buyers instead. Yeah, man, Andrew, but what, what did you expect? Man? You were at my company, like uh, on the pirate boat, you know, doing extremely risky stuff. And now you went to corporate uh, the stuff and, and yeah, but it's normal. I mean, the thing is uh, the company, they don't want someone to do um, uh, something too risky if they don't need to. So that's also the way of the company thinking like, look, our company is working with those terms. We don't take more risk than that. 
and that's it. Uh, from this one, where to find business partner out. What do you mean by business partner? Do you uh, counterparties? I have like uh, 10 videos on how to find counterparties, but uh, but then, uh, yeah, uh, you and how you can trust them. You, you don't trust them, that's the first thing you don't trust them. Um, un unless you've been working with them for years and years and years, you, you don't trust them. If you start trusting them, then you would get fucked. Uh, if you come a precious commodity, if you come from a precious commodity, to impossible. Yeah, sure, sure, sure. In in that in that uh, industry, yes, it's an edge. But of course, if you stick into precious metals, if you change, then it helps because you know how a product are thing. But it's not going to be that much of an edge. What do you think of Dubai multi commodity? I don't know what do I think about that, man. Um, I I don't know what they do there. Seriously, I don't. Is it like a warehouse? Is it what is it? I, I don't know. I, I, I tell me, man. What do they do there? <laughs> I I don't know. But I've heard of them. I've heard of that name, like D uh, DMCC or something like this. Yeah, but I'm not sure. What is it? A warehousing company? What, what do they do, man? I have an opportunity to buy 25 metric of Russia. Yeah, one thing. Uh, but no buyers. Like that. Do you think it's worth it? You know, uh, storing it in a warehouse in the U.S. indefinitely while looking for a buyer. I don't know, man. Uh, the thing is, okay. So you, as this is, I guess, your first um, deal. Um, it's not that a bad. It's not okay. Okay, I will. I will tell you what I think. What what I will do. So if I think, look, man, I think there is an opportunity for me to um, to trade sugar, and I really want to trade sugar. I'm, I'm willing to take a hit or to make money or to, to lose a little bit of even a little bit of money on this first container. So I will import the container, make sure that first of all, you can import in whatever country you want. I will find a warehouse and then I will sell it on uh, as a distributor, you know, to get a better margin. Uh, yes. Yeah, so this is what I would do if I really want to, to make it uh, in the uh, sugar business. But otherwise, is it a good idea? Not really. If you look at... Um, I have a, a video called speculating with commodity trading or with physical commodity trading, something like this. And I explain this issue that you are going to see, which is you are going to store your uh, sugar and the, the cost of storage is going to, to um, I mean, you, you have a, a, cost of, a, a cost of storage. So that's mean that you need to hope that the price of the sugar will go up in order to make money as you have no way to edge for something that small. Um, how much uh, European bank or financial shop for each trading finance like by months? Because I'm going to turn it 3% per month on the okay, man. So, what do you do? Can you do this, man? Can you do this? Can you do this, man? What do you do, man? What do you do, man? 3% per month? Man, this is like 36% per per <laughs> what, what do you do, man? So, first of all, let me know who financed you at that um, amount and if you can still make money with that finance here, <laughs> and, um, you must be doing something uh, risky or you must be uh, uh, quite a small company um, or maybe you don't have a lot of equity and they need to take a lot of risk. This is why they charge you 3% per month, which is very, very, very expensive. Um, uh, but maybe, I, I don't know, man, I, I, I need to know, but maybe there are good reasons for this, uh, why this is so expensive. Send me an email then. Uh -huh, it's team and how do you grow and what without taking some yeah man but again this is a point uh andrew maybe your company doesn't want to grow even though they say that but maybe they have cornered a part of the market that they know very well that, that they don't they have this risk parameter the risk parameter that the company is willing to take make that they cannot really grow because there is like no other counterparties that will fit those risk uh, parameter so yeah, that, that's a good question. Sometimes to grow more, you need to take more risk. Not sometimes, most of the time, actually. <laughs> uh, partners and money, which, ah, you work together. Yeah, yeah, man, that's, I don't know, man. That's very, very difficult. Uh, you need to assess uh, them. Uh, I, I've got stolen by my first uh, partner, one of my first partner. 
Um, man, I, I don't know what to say. Now I'm, I'm been doing that for 15 years, so I'm kind of okay to assess um, the what type of person it is. So is that guy going to store my money or not? But uh, but yeah, man. So it, I don't know what to say, man. This is very very complex. How do I find market for you know, because I have? That's like, I don't know, dude. I don't. I think there is like two trading house that uh, trade uranium. One is Itoshu, the Japanese guy, and the other one I don't remember. I think they are Russian or something like this, but. I've never traded or, uh, uranium or, but I think uranium you need to ship it to uh, like a converter, someone that will convert into a fuel. Um, then I don't know, man. That's I don't know. <laughs> Let's trade uh, citric pulp pellet from Brazil. Citric pulp pellet. I've never heard of that, so obviously I'm interested. Who buys, who buys that? Uh, what are Google's um, news source to stay up to date on a group? I don't know, man. I really don't know. Um, uh, usually, the, uh, you need to be more special. Yeah, not agriculture. You know, you need, okay, soybean or soybean in Brazil, soybean in, uh, and then there's like website for each of um, of these like niches or subcategories because I don't know one good website, you know, just for. We live in the Lucas Vernon. And come on. There's like a, on the stream now, there's Lucas. That was a, a student. Andrew also. And then he, he worked for me. He, he worked for me like for a few months. Uh, yeah, but John, what are some uh, good website to look for communities? I don't know. Yeah, the best one is Bloomberg, actually. Uh, this is the only one that I pay like 300 bucks to, to have uh, to read the news. Uh, what is your process for evaluating whether I trade a commodity like protein feed you are working on or, or do I need to take the second course? Uh, obviously, obviously, you need to take the second course, but then what? how do I evaluate? Okay, so I've got asked this question uh, a bunch. Um, I've made a bunch of videos about that, but I, I want the, the things that I'm going to look for is like, I don't want um big um i don't want uh, you know i don't have millions you know if i start a company i don't have millions to put so that's mean that it should be a, a commodity that you can trade without uh, uh millions of capital so that means that most of the commodities that are um uh, yeah, yeah my, a small fish into uh, uh surrounded by uh, fucking sharks you know <laughs> <laughs> so that's uh, um, first of all, this is this. So all the commodities that need uh, edging, all of that, uh, it's out because if you need to edge, then you need a lot of capital to edge your position. And all the guys are doing that. Um, um, I want to be, I want a commodity where, you know, you, as a trader, you take a lot of risk on um, logistics or um, aggregation or um, distribution. You know, I prefer to be like, in the end or at the end or at the bottom uh at the, the end or at the bottom of the supply chain where there is more risk but more like um uh, headache with uh with uh, logistic and so on so because this is where you are going to get the better margin a better margin for a small trader again i'm speaking as a if you want to start a small commodity trading firm um i like commodity where you, you need to have a, a lot of knowledge about um, the product the market like little changes in specification i uh, can make uh, one uh, the product work for someone but not someone else um yeah i mean it's, no, no, i've been doing that for a, a long time so i have way more uh things that i'm looking for that i'm looking for than uh, it used to but uh but yeah and also i don't really need to look for new community children you know i'm already quite full with the one that i do so and if you take the Saka courses, man, you, you can ask me all your questions you want. Is it made from? Ah, you mean the citric thing? Citric pulp, pulp it's made from. But yeah, okay, I, I guess. But where? Who is using that that stuff? Man? What are usually are your sort process when you're solving logistic problem in different country? Yeah, so the sort is uh, it's extremely easy. Is um, I want to have an eye uh, on the product all the time. 
So if we cannot have all, uh, yes, basically that, <laughs> that's it. I don't trust um, any counterparties with the product. So that means that if we buy, once we have purchased it, uh, the, the, the seller is not going to be involved and uh, the buyer also. So that, that's basically it. You need, you need to have a control. And if you don't have this control all the time, then just forget it. Or you need to use like proper company with proper insurance. And what's going on? Um, man, it's way less. I mean, it, it's uh, but again, I mean, if you if you have a tr people that charge you three percent, that means that it's not a bank. Um, I mean, or it's a bank that charge you two percent. Uh, of course, this European bank, it's less than that, but usually because they do things less risky than what you are doing. That's my sense. Uh, otherwise, it makes no sense that you you pay three percent. So yeah, European. But if you say European financier, um, man, maybe for what you do, that you won't find a European financier. Ah, it's just for animal feed. Yeah, maybe, man. Tell me. No, that <laughs> maybe. Maybe now that uh, getting more into it. Thanks, ah, c'est Adriano. Yeah. yeah, I don't know. I don't do wheat in corn a lot, so I can't, I can't really tell you. I, I will not give my son then. Um, I think uh, after this live, I will cut this part where my son is on the screen because, man, the internet is full of weirdos, man. Even with my small audience, man, people are completely crazy so i can't imagine the people with one million people that following them but I mean, they must be getting like some weird shit. uh can you start gold trading with everything is wrong in your <laughs> everything is wrong <laughs> oh god man. uh man gold trading in africa is maybe the thing with the most yeah. 99.9999% is a scam. So I don't know, man. The only way to do a gold deal in Africa, because I guess your name is from Africa, is uh, you need to take the good and then you need to pay all the paper because now you cannot do um, you cannot do some shady stuff. So uh, you need to pay all the papers, uh, licenses, document to get it uh, out of the country safely. And in some countries, you need to have like a, a custom broker, which is registered. And sometimes the custom broker steal from you. So I mean, this is very, very difficult. I wouldn't touch that. I wouldn't spend any seconds in your life uh, doing that unless you own a mine or I mean, you, you have like some real edge that would make sense for you to spend all of that money to get the, the gold out, hopefully to Dubai and then don't get scammed in Dubai. So um, I don't know, dude, I wouldn't do that at all. I think. Uh, Time is the most precious thing uh, in life, so don't waste it trying to do that. Does a crude oil trading market have the most ruthless trader versus other since the transaction size are, are so large? So that's not a bad idea. Uh, so um, uh, yes, I would. It's not really that. So the thing is, um, the more crude oil is maybe the market where you need to to have like I don't know. Five, 50 million in equity and then if you would just want to start even maybe even more than that so um this is not a question of ruthless it's just a question of um there is not a lot of players that can really manage crude oil so usually everyone knows each other so i wouldn't say that they're ruthless but they you know when there's a deal then you know they they work more you know? <laughs> so um, I, I wouldn't say that there's more asshole in energy. Maybe, you know, as an outsider, you think those guys are asshole because usually they make a lot of money, so they have a, a big ego. And also as a trader, you need to have a big ego. Uh, otherwise, you dot yourself too much and then you don't do shit. So um, that's... Uh, but, um, so not, not really most ruthless, but there is less player that can do a, a, lot of, a lot of money. So it's going to be extremely competitive. Thanks, I mean, how do you add trade if there's no derivative for your underlying? Is it worth to look derivative? You do it like uh, like we do, man. 
bold on the wall. <laughs> no, you don't edge. No, <laughs> but okay. So then you need to see what you want to do. Man. If you want to store the um, the the commodity for nine months, uh, yeah, it's probably not a good idea. But then you need to reduce the time that um, you have control of the good and sell it as fast as possible. So you really this is it. If I want to do an uh, order payment term aside from 100% uh, C for better margin, the only ways to come out and start your own because no corporate firm will allow that. No, no, this is completely uh, this is completely wrong, Andrew. I know a lot of big firms that do prepayment and stuff like that. Yeah. But again, they do it in a um, geography that they know very well. You know, they have um, maybe they know the governor of this region where they prepare the call. So, you know, they won't prepare like uh, just because they uh, they found a trader that uh, uh, found a deal and they need to prepare. But uh, no, no, I know a lot of big corporations that prepare, you know, so that's, uh, that's wrong to, to think that. Okay, yeah, so let me show you the uh, books that I'm reading right now. Once I finish... So once I've um, finished with the, the book, I will put it there so then I can show you. So uh, those are, this is a book about strategy, the seventh uh, foundation of a business strategy. So this is seven point that makes a good company with um, with Edge. That's quite a good book actually. And this one was um, um, recommended by Peter Thiel. So then I wrote this, the, I read, I didn't even uh, read it because it was too fucking boring. So this is about um, uh, a French uh, billionaire uh, that is extremely well implemented in uh, in Africa. And I wanted to read about the life about that guy. But <laughs> this guy is a, <laughs> is a real shark. So basically, when he heard that those guy, the guy that was writing the book, was like looking to make a book about him, he basically sent uh, sent to them like lawyers and shit like this and so on. So half of the book is how, how about those poor guys um uh, were like doing fighting against this guy <laughs> so uh yeah not really interesting sovereign individual so this is a very interesting book uh if you are a little bit a libertarian and you want to um, understand one of the yeah main book of this um uh, stream of thought and uh courage uh courage courage is calling for my leader very quick read also a really good one so this is uh, the book that I read the last month, something like this. Okay, do we have other questions? Uh, and then if we don't have questions, we are going to go to the mic. I mean, I, I don't know. Man. I know that it was a complete asshole, but that's... <laughs> but they were all like... Sharks, I mean, those guys work like 80 hours a week, you know, and uh, this is what they expected from all the other people that work with them. So if you want to sacrifice your life for your job, that was a good place to be because then when um, uh, Glencore went public, I mean, I think a thousand people went to uh, become millionaires, something like this. So cash you trading from West Africa, how? To go about it man if you ask me that's uh, that's tough for you man you you buy cashew and then you ship it <laughs> ask me like more ask me more specific question uh yes yeah this is a very very good book uh actually uh i don't have it here it's in my old house but uh, uh, it's a, one of the best book actually, because it explains, I mean, it gives 40 examples of trades and all of them are completely different. And you can use those trades, uh, uh, you can translate those type of trade into any commodity. So this is a very, very good book. I recommend it to uh, uh, anyone. What do you think any community which is cheaper in Russia now? Because it's in the other country with good margin like metal stuff. Man, 
I, I will not say um, there is not good margin and uh, there is margin but not good margin and then you need to have the setup to deal with Russia also you need to have like a content in Dubai Hong Kong whatever if you're big enough uh, then you can deal with Russia from Europe you know the, the bank will allow you but you need to be a fortune 500 company to do that but um but it's not an easy trade but and also how are you going to do with a with your Russian counterparty you are going to prepare it's not an easy trade at all coffee trading from history ah, the group Judah, no man. <laughs> and what is good margin man? what what is good margin tell me what is good margin I don't know. There's a lot of people that trade a coffee out of, from East Africa. So, um, good margin? No, I don't think so. But maybe I'm completely wrong. But what is good margin? Okay, guys. So, if you have like any question, let me know. Yo, man. I get in messages of people watching on the. On the uh, uh, the thing. Uh, uh, do, 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 do. Yeah, we have like uh, right now. Um, uh, the team is uh, doing one of uh, our first like big operation with a lot, a lot of truck and so on. So um, I'm watching the the operation, uh, but I'm going to speak about that like maybe next year when we have a few uh, trade done and we haven't lost money. Uh, what is your view on uh, shipping industry? Better be a charter than a broker. I don't know, man. I think a ship broker they can make a lot of money, but it's a very tough uh, job. But to, this is real brokers. You know, if you are a ship broker, you um, um, you, you are not on LinkedIn. You know, chasing uh, pipe dreams. It, it's a it's a real job. So I think some people make a lot of money, but again, with the ship brokering, it's always like this. It's like, it's Pareto rule, you know. Eighty percent of the money is made by twenty percent of the ship brokers. So, if you want to hustle to be a part of this twenty percent, it's going to take a long time, but it's possible. But then, yeah, I think it's a very, very tough job. But people make money. A charter, it's maybe less uh, intent, uh, less difficult than a broker, but um, I think you can make a lot of money also uh, as a ship owner. No, no, I don't think I know. <laughs> There's a lot of billionaires, so I know. But again, extremely technical. It's like you have like a oh about that uh, next video that I'm going to publish. Um, I'm going to uh, watch with you three interview of uh, commodity brokers. Actually, it's two commodity traders, two commodity traders, and one ship owner. So uh, and, and you'll see. I will become a working student from the journey for a larger chemical company. Will you say that such person will be? But uh, first, Swiss. I don't know, man. Are you already in the But I will front desk. Yeah, no, no, it's good. It's a very good, um, a very good uh, first gig. No, no, perfect, man. Yeah, works for sale. Uh, it's very, very good book. Um, and I'm very surprised that he had the ex guy from Glencore and so on to to speak openly about what they what they did. So, no, very good book. Next slide. Next slide. It's a scam. What what, what is next slide? Uh, why do you think more students are still interested? interested? But why do you think that uh, more students? Are... But I mean, um, um, private banking, private equity, uh, and all the hedge fund, I guess. Um, um, uh, it's a way bigger industry. I think it's sort of like commodity trading is not really well known. You know, physical commodity trading is not well known. Um, there isn't a lot of firm that really do it at large scale compared to uh, investment banking, private equity, and so on. So uh, I think this is the reason. There's just more people doing uh, financial stuff than uh, physical commodity stuff. If I'm just starting, is it wise to start slowly? In, uh, uh, yes, you need to start on one commodity. This is what I would recommend you. Only one, and you get very good at understanding one, and, and then it will open doors. I would prefer for the job. 
I mean, I wouldn't, I, I would sleep well, drink water, you know, <laughs> uh, shut the fuck up and listen and you should be good. Um, but you are chemicals, you said, um, I would read book about the chemicals. This is what I would do. Uh, in your opinion, what would you say is the most, most up and coming commodity? I don't know, man. That's a good question. I don't know. I don't think that um, um, Geneva, I don't know, man. Because most of the traders are moving out of uh, Switzerland. The up and coming trader, they are moving out um, because it's uh, for, for a lot of reasons. They, they are mostly in Dubai now, the new one. So I don't know, man. I have names, but um, I, you know, this, this is a private company and I'm not allowed to. Uh, to, to, to give you numbers. So I know a few companies that are doing extremely well and are growing extremely fast, but country tell you, you know, you're welcome. What's, uh, what's approach monitoring risk analysis? What's your problem? The problem is like, okay, it's a good question, but it's not easy to answer because there's like so many uh, angle to, to answer. First of all, what type of risk are you talking about? Um, if you want to, let me let me try to find this. A good book that I used to recommend. Um, uh, come on. Uh, hold on a second. Yeah, I don't find it now. What was the book? There is one book about risk, um, but it's more about financial risk and so on. Ah, I don't remember. It's a French, uh, is it this one? I think it's a French woman that wrote it. Yeah, man. I don't know. There were one book uh, like this. I think if you find on my um, the Shiving Community Academy, if you go to the bl old blog post, there is one about book. Maybe you can find the post. I don't know. Um, yeah, the, but otherwise, is what type of risk are you are you talking about? Because there is a lot of type of risk. And then um, um, most of them are not really um, discussed anywhere like counterparty risk and so on. Um, operational risk, how do you quantify that? What you are going to find is a lot of um, highly ma mathematical um, books that explain how to edge your whatever risk on the financial mar market. But to do that, I mean, you need to already be in a big firm that uh, um, edge, edge, edge itself for or, or speculate. OK, guys, so I think uh, this is pretty much it. I don't think there is any other questions. Um, um thanks 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 for all um all of you again for my indian viewers happy um deepavali and um uh i'll see you guys next video tuesday then i'm not sure that i'm going to be able to post another video because i'm uh, taking a week off uh and uh, then uh, we'll be back ciao